I think that's all the announcements that we have. And uh, right now, prepare your hearts and your minds. Let's take a moment. Center ourselves to meet with our God. Would you join with me in the call to worship is in the bulletin. <clears throat> o word of God incarnate, O wisdom from on high, O truth unchanged, unchanging, O light of our dark sky. O make the, thy church, dear Savior, a lamp more bright than gold. O bear before the nations thy true light as of old. O teach thy wandering pilgrims by this their path to trace. Till clouds and darkness ended, we see thee face to face. Would you join me in our opening hymn, Holy, 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 number 323 in your hymnal.
Would you pray with me? Lord and God, we give you thanks for this bright, beautiful morning. We give you thanks for the time of summer when we relax and take time with family and friends. We thank you for the opportunity always to come into your house, to give worship to you, and to seek your guidance. So this day, as we gather together, we open our hearts and our minds to you, that you might lead us in the way that you have in mind for each and every one of us, a way of truth, a way of light, a way of mercy and joy. Thank you, O oh God, for your presence here this morning. We give you thanks in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, and we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> be seated. We have given our praise unto God in song. We give our gifts unto God in recognition not only of what God has given to us, but also recognizing that what we give, God will use for others. I invite the deacons to come forward. back into thee something of what you have given to us. May you bless these tithes and offerings. May you bless our lives that they might be used for your glory and for the building of your kingdom here on earth. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
with heart here open For in my hour of darkness I may be Seeking the joy of love unspoken O oh Lord, be Thou near to me And the holy voices sing hallelujah Ever will Thy reign be As I wander through this life O oh Lord, be Thou near to me burden of my making yet in the darkness still the light I see maker whose love is not forsaking oh Lord be thou near to me and the holy voices sing hallelujah Ever will thy reign be As I wander through this life O oh Lord, be thou near to me Wait a minute, I was going to lead her into prayer, but I understand that this is when the children get to go out, or I should say, need to go out for the lesson that they're going to be having. Now, i got to tell you, I'm going to be preaching again in August, and this ain't going to happen. I'm going to have a children's message. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you all. Say hi to Lorraine for me. Bye-bye. <laughs> Lorraine's going to have to wait one just a little bit longer next time I preach. We come to our time that Heavenly Father comes. I would invite you to sing with me all three verses, but keep that one in mind as we sing it together. Yeah. 
Please be seated. Good morning. Please join me in a scripture reading today in your Bible. I, I don't have the page, <laughs> but it's in your bulletin. Page 439. Thank you. It says so right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll read the first and you follow with the second and so forth. And we'll join us together at the, at the last one. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cry to you. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, for you is faithful to us, and to thanks to the following name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I say, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you have established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, the praises of me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Together, may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. I like that particular scripture. I think in part because it's so danged honest. <laughs> you know, I, throughout the verses, they're expressing their desire. They're also expressing, hey, Lord, come on, you make sure you're here with me. Will you please make sure you're here with me? And, uh, and God responds, and the people understand that. It's a good passage. I want to read another passage to you now in Matthew chapter 11. Bear with me, I'm getting to it. <laughs> well, come on. I've got a new Bible, and um, it doesn't open up like the one I had before to exactly where I want it to be. Matthew chapter 11, I'm going to be reading selected verses here. I'm going to go from 16 to 19, and if you're like me, you may read the ones in between. <laughs> and that's okay. Uh, it's all part of it. But these are the ones I want to pick up on. 11 to 16, then I'm, uh, excuse me, uh, not 16 to 19, then I'm going to jump down to 25 to 30. Then the disciples came and asked Jesus, why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has, it has not been given. For to those who have more will more be given. Will, will, excuse me. For those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have, this is verse 13, chapter 13. What the heck is that? That's not, that didn't sound right when I started. You, nobody said anything. Why didn't you say something? <laughs> I, yeah. I, told, I told Heather a little bit ago, I made my mistake for today, but apparently I had not. <laughs> One more page back. One more page back. And now I'll start at chapter 11. <laughs> Sixteen through nineteen. You've got time to read it now, right? But to what will I compare this generation? It's like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. 
We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. Now I want to jump down at this point to verse 25. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord, and have, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to the infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by the Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Father chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God's word to us this day. It's been an eventful week. I think you probably all agree with that. The parade on Tuesday was delightful. The get-togethers after, I'm sure, were filled with good feelings, good food, good friends, a delightful warmth of family and friends gathered. And now, after all the, fe the festivities of the national holiday, after enjoying outdoor fun and barbecues and whatever else filled your long weekend last week, this Sunday, we gather here. We gather for a celebration that isn't so loud and explosive as fireworks and crowds, parades and brass bands, but nonetheless a gathering with at least as much meaning and even more wonder. For we look today at a calling that is greater than citizenship in a nation. We look today at a larger answer regarding our living. So once more, we come to the words of Jesus. To consider what he has in mind for us in 2023. And he speaks, to what would I compare this generation? Okay, let that question hang in the air for a second. If you're the disciples and Jesus says this and he pauses, you're thinking, uh-oh, what's coming? We might be thinking this, you talking to me, Jesus? And Jesus would say, you bet I am. You are like children, children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. Yet John the Baptist came, neither eating nor drinking, and folks said that he had a demon. I come to you and folks say that I am a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But folks, wisdom is vindicated by their deeds. This passage leads into one of the most comforting verses, I think, in Scripture. Come to me, all who are weary and are heavy, carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. But that comes at the end of the chapter. The earlier verses lead up to this most comforting statement. They consist of Jesus' teachings about the way of knowing God outside of theological training and strict religiosity. And if we were to look ahead, the scene in the next chapter shows Jesus in conflict with the religious leaders over rules on the Sabbath. The invitation extends in both directions. To those of a misguided generation seeking the wisdom of God, that's the followers, and to those who would seek to govern when and how to find that wisdom, that would be the self-righteous faith leaders. When I love well, I love this illustrative way in which Jesus speaks about taking, taking his yoke upon us, for it's not heavy. I also very much like the way Eugene Peterson paraphrases this particular invitation. He writes it this way. Are you tired? Worn out? Burned out on a religion? Come to me. Get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. And watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. 
I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. This morning, before I got here, when I got up early in the morning, a little earlier than I usually do, <laughs> I sat on the back porch. Donna came out and joined me, and it was so quiet. It was just beautiful. And I thought about this verse, take the moment, take the moment, the peace of God comes to us. Jesus Christ cries out for misery, the misery, suffering, violence, and the angry words that are so prevalent today. And the world takes no note. Jesus Christ celebrates each individual with no, ma no matter what the circumstances of their lives. Does the church of Jesus Christ cry out? Does the church of Jesus Christ take note? Those are the questions we need to face. During the three days of national celebration this week, there were three mass shootings. Maybe you heard about them. One in Philadelphia and one in Baltimore and one in Fort Worth, Texas. Ten people were killed. 38 wounded. The motives for all three were unclear. And a news announcer went on to say that there have been 340 mass shootings in our country just this year. That's in our country. You know what's happening in the rest of the world too. I could lament and chastise our leaders now about how little is being done at a national level to curb this kind of violence. I could assign blame to government, to self-appointed self violent vigilantes, or even rail on about how kids are being raised today. But as real as some of those issues might be, and as legitimate it would be to put that on the agenda of, of put that on our agenda, perhaps there needs to be another effort first. You see, there's a level of mental and moral and physical exhaustion right now. Have you felt it? I wonder. Or do you now? After two years of COVID, after with the, after, and with the ongoing political mudslinging that's been happening by everyday Americans as well as by many leaders, with the economic difficulties of so many and the continuing violence abroad, and yes, here at home, we're all tired. Yes, tired, whether we acknowledge it to ourselves or not. The news cycles don't really help much too, in spite of having their uh, ha ending the half hour news with a feel good story. What we need today is something else, something beyond the everyday that offers hope and real rest. And my friends, I believe the Church of Jesus Christ has the chance to offer God's alternative. Amidst the reality that tires our hearts and sometimes roils our blood so that we might want to act just like what so disturbs us in the culture, we have Jesus. And Jesus offers us a different idea. Peterson, in his fair phrase, prayer phrase of Jesus' words, speaks of coming to Jesus, getting away with Jesus, and he will show us how to take a real rest. He will teach us to walk a new walk and work a better work with him so that we will be in rhythm with grace. I like that phrase. The version that we all know is take my yoke upon you and learn from me. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. The yoke is what controls the beast, the burden that would carry the load or pull the cart in Jesus' day. You all know this. And of course, it's still used today. Just think about the parade in Bristol. This last week, if you happen to be there, Bill Rollo's horses were pulling the stagecoach that bore the Grand Marshal of the Bristol Parade, Fred Baser. Those horses had yokes to pull the coach, as did the others who pulled the horse-drawn hearse that was also part of the parade. We may have a negative image of these particular words in Matthew's Gospel that tells us to take Jesus' yoke upon ourselves. But truth is, we will wear a yoke no matter the course in the course of our lives. Sometimes we choose them, other times they are placed upon us. The expectations of family and friends, for instance, that we might gladly bear, or the work requirements of our employment. Sometimes it's a yoke placed upon, by a place on, uh, that we place on ourselves by the courses of our actions, whether they're good or bad. Some of these yokes serve the desires of others, 
some of the yokes or burdens that we place upon ourselves, and they can be heavy indeed. Or worse, they may be guided by hands that care nothing for our welfare, our hopes, or our dreams. They can tire our spirits and our souls. And do you know what's worse today? We often place heavy burdens upon others without knowing it or not wanting to acknowledge it. I read an article this week. I couldn't find, <clears throat> couldn't find it as I prepared this message. I tried, or I'd tell you where, it read it, where I read it and who wrote it. But I do remember much of it because it's, it was vivid enough for me to remember. It was in a detention camp along the Texas border. A single dad who had lost his wife in the long trek from Central America he sat in the darkened corner of the sheltering tent at night, fear and despair washing over him as he thought of what still might lie ahead for his daughter and for him. The darkness was illustrative of his worry, his exhaustion, and his dwindling hope. As he lay there looking at her, his six-year-old daughter was getting up from near him and she slowly walked to a place on the carpeted sod where a hole in the tent had let in a circle of moonlight. She stepped into it and began a simple six-year-old's dance. Maybe it was something she had learned from her mother in the previous six years, or perhaps it was simply a childlike delight in the spotlight created by the tent's, tent roof's hole but she spun and she dipped, oblivious to the people around her and the situation that she and her dad were in. She was dancing in the darkness, and she brought smiles and hope to others. She's just another refugee immigrant, of course, like so many others. But I wonder at the yoke she wore and the yoke we wear as unmoving watchers in the drama of life. The story didn't tell me what might have happened to her or her dad, but I wonder if maybe, just maybe for a moment or two, the burden was lifted or lightened for her as she danced and for her father as he watched her. And so I come back to the question that Jesus asked, to what will I compare this generation? Keep in mind, Jesus here is speaking not just to his disciples, but to all the folks who had come near him, to hear him. A generation that had been under the yoke of Rome all their lives. A generation that knew deprivation and the heavy burden not only of taxation, but also the terrible treatment by those who thought of themselves as better or more refined. And interspersed within the crowd, there were some very religious people, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, many of whom probably saw the common folk as rabble to stay away from, lest they become unclean, if in fact they even made the effort to truly see those folks they were with. Now you and I, good Christians all, live in a world where there is inequity and violence, where there is heartbreak and tiredness, where there are folks simply adrift in this world who cannot see the wonder of what is around them nor the possibilities they have to live bringing light and joy and release to others. In the darkness, I would hope we might show them the dance, the way of walking with Jesus, working with Jesus, allowing him to show us the unforced rhythms of grace. I would hope that we are not too tired to care, not too caught up in ourselves to respond to the needs and the dreams of others, what I hope we can teach each other and our neighbors is the balance of work and rest. May we respond to Jesus' call to a way of walking and working in the world that is less about striving and more about gratitude. Sabbath living. May we hear Jesus' comforting words. Sabbath, leading, Sabbath living. Finding rest in the midst of living. And with a renewal of heart and mind, may we try dancing in the darkness ourselves to the tune 
of God's good news. Amen. I want you to join with me in our final hymn. And I'm really glad it's in our hymnal. <laughs> Reach out to Jesus. Number three, 430. Press you with its worry and its care. Are you tired and friendless? Have you almost lost your way? Jesus will help you tell to him today. He is always there. He Just remember what to do. Reach out to Jesus. He's reaching out to you. Good words. I've offered this benediction before. This one my father had in his Bible. Seems appropriate for today. You never know when someone may catch a dream from you. You never know when a little word or something you might do may open, the, uh, open up the windows of a mind that's seeking light. The way you live may not matter at all, but then again, it might. And just in case it could be that another's life through you might possibly change for the better with a broader and brighter view, it seems it might be worth a try at pointing the way to the right. Of course, it may not matter at all, but then again, it might. Live the faith, my friends. Live the faith. Amen.